Hi all and welcome. Tonight I'll be painting an Art Rage and we're going to be doing two quick things tonight that hopefully will help improve your digital painting and also improve your experience while we're all staying at home trying to quarantine due to this global pandemic. Digital painting, as I've said before, is an amazing and very fruitful activity. Um, and that's in a normal circumstance, but it's especially helpful in a time like this. From the safety and comfort of my home, I can paint in a plein air style, I can paint portraits, I can explore different media, and I can do it all affordably and safely without getting anyone else sick or me getting sick from someone else. So this is my offer to you tonight. Um, I want to give you a couple different strategies, basically tool settings and approaches for doing plein air painting, at least a painting in the style of plein air in ArtRage. And then I want to use those same settings to do a portrait painting and see how that turns out. So let's first start with a plein air painting. Here we have a plein air oil painting, tips and techniques from Draw, Paint, Repeat. This video I thought was fascinating because um, Usually when you see people doing plein air paintings and they record, it's, it's, you'll often get a picture, the video will, will kind of have a shot of them and, and you'll see more of the artist than the painting. And that's awesome for getting a feeling for you know, who they are. But really when you're doing plein air painting tutorials, you want to see the canvas. And I thought this was a very, very good setup for being able to see the artist break this down. And if you scan through the video, you can see it's an amazing tutorial of like a nice, plein air scene. Um, you can see the development of all the values, warm and cool, uh, and nice brush strokes. So how does that apply to digital and what we're going to be able to do here today? We'll check this out. You can set the play speed to any speed you want and just set it to play or you can just click through at different moments learning from this artist here. I would highly recommend checking out Draw, Paint, Repeat for a paint along if you're curious. So. Um, what I'm going to show you right now, though, is how to use the oil brush with these settings. You can use zero thinners, four loading, depth and gloss at 30, and then play with the, the brush head and make it whatever you want. You can make rounds, flats, filberts, whatever. So I am going to just kind of click to a random point in the video. And I can go down into my color wheel and I can grab a color that is somewhat indicative of one of those darker values. Now just let me sketch this in so you kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, look how easy this is. You can kind of lay in. This is using a pencil. This is a pencil with the hard shader preset. And the pencil is scaled up huge to almost 500%. To change the size of a brush, you just drag it across the screen. And that's how you can kind of adjust size. Um, you can see that the artist here was drawing in that mountain range in the background, like so. And then they were basically just mapping in the darker values. And so you go back to the oil brush with my personal settings and you know, here we are. Make this a little bit larger so I can get a little more paint on the canvas quickly. And using varying amounts of pressure, I can get this tangle of brush strokes to look a little bit like the beginnings of the shadowy rocks that the artist is putting down. I could skip ahead, maybe that's a little too far, and I could start to develop some of the other tones that you see in the picture. So, you know, there was definitely some underpainting of this violet that's going on, and then the artist was taking and, and establishing some warmer tones on top of that. And what's so cool about Art Rage is you can see those colors are mixing naturally, just like they would if you were, you know, painting in real life. And then on top of that, then the artist is finding some deep dark greens and then the, the the paint body is actually getting more and more loose the more that you have more colors laying on top of each other and so you could see how you could create a very good approximation of a plein air painting and as you kind of get through each time stamp you can start to build a more complex and robust feeling of space and light and so on so that would be how I would do a paint along. Again, full credit to Draw, Paint, Repeat with this great tutorial. So let me close that down. Now, that same exact approach is what I'm going to use for this painting tonight. And this portrait painting is a, it's a portrait of 
a friend of mine and it's from a photo shoot from quite a while ago but I have always liked keeping this photo around because let me clear that layer because obviously I just think it's a cool photo I love the time of day it's like kind of golden hour and stuff but um, I mostly love the intensity of the gaze I love the, the cool warm color scheme and that blue is one of my favorite colors in the world so all that together make it for a really nice painting and just to kind of speed things along I did a quick pre-draw using that same um, preset for my pencil tool and I used that blue that is kind of one of the inspirations of the picture just to do that sketch and I also again in the interest of time did a really rough beginning using these uh, these settings here so let me put that right there I also leave the canvas settings up because I want you to be able to see that I'm using canvas smooth canvas and I have these settings on that smooth canvas and um, you can see here that as I'm kind of painting in all of this um, I'm really trying to to lean into this principle of three looks two things one stroke and I always talk about that but that's really something that is so important to remember and so important to remind yourself of because in in digital you think it would be the opposite that you're like oh I have all this flexibility I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it I'm gonna be bold I'm gonna uh, be brazen and just see what happens because I can always undo but what happens often is you have the you know it's like it kind of brings out the freedom brings out kind of your darker tendencies and I think the darker tendency in art rage in all of digital painting is that you can zoom in you can like you can get down to like a one pixel brush and you can start creating the most kind of anal um, lifeless robotic copy of of your subject ever because you can literally get it perfect right and what I want you to try to do is is that part of you that's saying you know perfection 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 just treat that person as an uninvited guest whoever that voice is inside of you and instead of that um, I want you to embrace that little that little kid inside of you that would be drawing in uh, in sidewalk chalk and uh, in, in the backyard you know and on the patio or that child inside of you that had the cr fistful of crayons and was drawing on the wall you know and your parents like oh my gosh oh my gosh you know and, and you just run away in your diaper like you're just like it needs to be a little bit more about just having fun and and painting in general needs to be about that and the way it becomes you know fun is like here's the thing like the the fun is the secondary it's it's the byproduct of having the right mentality and so um, especially if you're a new painter and you're like you know you're nervous and you don't know what you're doing and you're scared and this is like oh, this is crazy what are you just big brush like what are you talking about here's what I would suggest uh, simple simple process for getting into this first pick a simple subject like a single apple a single pear a single lemon um, and, and you know don't find a, a product picture that's like from a grocery store or something you know on, on Google instead go into your kitchen and just take a picture with your phone of some singular piece of produce and or a singular desk object and put a, a nice light on it before you do so give yourself a single directional light to study um, if you have any of those old like halogen desk lamps those are perfect the light that comes off of those things is so hot and and colorful and it'll make whatever you're looking at just seem to be just like screaming with color and you know don't put it the, the object too close or too far but just you know try to make the scene look nice to you but keep it simple don't don't worry about you know making something that's going to go in a gallery or you know that you're going to show anybody just take a picture of something that is simple that has light on it and and make sure you you have a good enough picture that you can like you know that that you're somewhat interested in it right like but really think about this it's not the object that's important it's the light it's the light that's important it's the color of the light in, in where the lights hitting the object it's the color of the light where it's in shadow the shadows you'll see when you start studying this stuff are not black they're also full of color 
And so you're just giving yourself a chance to study the light. And that's the key. That's the key to this whole thing is that even when I sit down and I've been painting since, I mean, almost every day for, for so long that I can't even, you know, I couldn't even count the number of paintings I've done in my life. Like it's, it's probably absurd. But even when I sit down to paint, there can be nerves or there can be expectations or there can be all kinds of problems. But what I think is most important is that mentality. And I, I have to even you know, remind myself of it all the time. Because when, when painting for me gets dull, it's because I'm not thinking about it in the right way. It's the same way as like if, if you know, your relationships are getting dull, it's because you're, you're coming at it with the wrong expectations. If your expectation is to learn, right? So what am I going to learn tonight? And you look at this picture of this, of this awesome, awesome lighting and this, this cool person who's got like this daring gaze and there's like all this intensity. Well, what do I want to learn? Well, maybe it's technical. I want to learn how to use this software because I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe it's conceptual. Um, I want to see what happens if I can... Um, play with brushwork in a certain way and then and then how that was going to impact the mood of the piece and, and does that change the expressive quality of it or maybe it's color you know and you say I want to push the complementary color scheme this obviously orange blue co complementary color scheme but I want to push it in in an exaggerated way I don't want to just kind of do color local color reproduction I want to push this in some and do something a little bit daring with it or maybe you're saying, hey, I just need to work on portraiture and how to make those soft transitions between jaw and chin and cheek and lips, like make that those edges look realistic. Like I'm having trouble, not just with my drawing, but with edges. And I want to explore that. So anything that you sit down if, with like a learning goal in your mind, then that's the goal. And that's the kind of thing that needs to be the goal. The goal can't be... I want to make a pretty picture that goes in a gallery and sells for $5,000 because that number one is going to corrupt your art if you're thinking about who you're going to sell it to. And number two, um, that outcome based pressure is the wrong way to paint. You know, it's like, it's like you'd be going on a date and the first thing you're thinking about is, you know, I, she, you know, she has to think this about me and we have to have this kind of fun and whatever. Oof, I would not want to go on that date, right? Um, because then the other person is just, now they, and their attitude of you and the night are, you know, just a, they're just, that's just a, like a stepping stone toward, toward your own, like their, their attitude is just a stepping stone toward your, you know, self-serving end, right? Um, because you have an objective and they're just part of your objective like nobody wants to be in a, in a date like that um, I don't want to be anybody's objective um, and, and so you have to get those end results out of your head and you have to um, think about well what, what am I even doing right what is even happening here I'll tell you what's happening when you're painting you are observing the world and you're letting the mystery of it and the in intensity of it and the, the inexplicable nature of all those relationships just just you're turning off all the dampening and you're just letting everything in and you're sitting in that right and you just and you respond and that's painting right so like right now I'm responding and I'm interested in when I took this photo and right now and uh, as I'm painting this photo that I took I'm interested in the light I'm interested in brush strokes, light, and the development of, of, of a, an attitude and character through those things, right? So if I keep that in mind, I'm just learning a thing. And this thing that I, I'm going to learn is going to look a little bit like this, I hope. Then you get out and, and get, your, get, get painting and see what happens. And that's, that's the attitude that will give you freshness in your work. That's the attitude that will give you freedom in your work. And that's the attitude that will give you um, the best learning. Because it's not about outcomes. It's not about pressure. It's about curiosity. Um, 
I always talk to my students about curiosity and I say, you know, how many of you are curious? And we're like, oh yeah, I'm all curious. How many of you are creative? Oh yeah, I'm creative. All these things, right? Well, I always say, well, what if, what if a three foot tall purple dude with two heads just slams open the, our, our, class, our studio door and he's got eyeballs in his hands and he's, he's screaming some, in some language we don't understand. Well, what would happen? Most of us would run to the back of the room screaming and you know, and, and there'd be various degrees of that would be 99% of what would happen. And that's, that's really like, I, I, it's a the ridiculous sort of like, what if, but the idea behind it is, um, is when it comes to creativity, when it comes to um, artwork, it's all new and it's all pretty scary sometimes because, um, and, you know, you think, oh, it's just, it's just fun. I'm just goofing around, right? Right. But like to do something totally new, to do something totally, I mean, if you've never picked up a paintbrush before, it's going to be as wild and uncomfortable as, as experiencing that, that strange creature running through the door. You're not going to know how to deal with it. Right. And so we have to, you know, if your objective is to always be in control, or if your objective is to always know what's going on, or if your objective is to always be good at stuff, well, there's always going to be something that's going to trip you up. But if your objective is to be curious, um, we get tripped up there too. But but being curious is a way better goal than being in control. Um, and again, just comparing it to relationships. I don't want to be in control of my relationships. Gross, right? That's gross. I want to be curious in my relationships so that when, you know, my wife says, hey, this bothered me. If I'm, if my worry is about getting things right, if my worry is about being per perfect, if my worry is about sustaining myself and, 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 and protecting my interest, that's going to be a really uncomfortable conversation. But if my interest is in her and in, in being curious, then that conversation can be a great learning experience. Same thing with this painting. If I sit down and I say, well, I, I have to get this right, etc. I mean, you know, you get the idea. You don't have to hammer it too hard. But um, what you'll find in your freedom of movement when you are exploring things with curiosity is you'll find that you have some aptitude, some interest, some passion for certain parts of it. And what you have to remember is that, that if you're a new painter, that's just the beginning. That's a taste of what is to come. And what you need to have um, if you're a new painter is a mentality that is patient. And you need to have also a strategy that is tested and sustainable. So if you're new to painting and you're kind of curious about this digital painting thing, Maybe you picked up Art Rage in the quarantine and you're like, what am I doing? I would suggest looking back in at, at some of my older tutorials, maybe the, there's like a long-winded pear demo and then there's um, a long-form rooster painting and there's like, a, you know, some old paintings there that where I really do everything super step-by-step -step, and I kind of talk through my thinking and, and, I, and I go for it. So find um, some process to follow that that's going to give you structure that's going to give you um, one thing at a time to focus on because you're you need to have a sort of simplicity um, because you'll get lost now here's a great example of that do you see this there's this curvature this slight downward curve from the contour of this mask in the way that that shadow of that contour is laying on the volume of the face and I was like talking right I'm just talking to you guys and instead of deeply observing I'm just kind of like winging it and I kept painting that curve wrong because in my head I wasn't able to sort of just think it through as I'm talking and it's late at night but if I would just turn my brain off I could just lay that color in and not even not even have to like wonder or strategize or get my get my you know trained artist brain on. I can just look and see curve, 
and I put down curve, right? And then I can see, oh, at the edge of that, look at that transition between the shadow and the highlight. There's this like really hot red color that like bounces between them and just find that color. And then, oh, and the eye and the eye should come in a little further or whatever, right? And you just start laying it all in. So hopefully that gives you a starting point. And let's say you're, you're a, a, a long time traditional artist and you're like, I'm gonna pick up ArtRage because none of my painting buddies are going out anymore. Everybody's like hunkered down and I don't wanna just sit and watch reruns of The Office again and again, which I would, you know, who doesn't wanna watch The Office? But in the, the, the thing you wanna do is, is take, give yourself a chance, you know, if you're in that category, give yourself a chance to expand your art uh, experience you can, and, and this is what I do, um, have ArtRage on your iPad. You can have ArtRage on your desktop, ArtRage on your laptop. You can get a Wacom tablet. You can get um, an Apple Pencil. You can um, even paint in ArtRage on the app on your Chromebook if you have one of the stylus-enabled Chromebooks. There are so many ways to do this. Um, and there are some ways that are better than others and some setups that are better than others. And if you want to talk about that, just message me and I'll give you my recommendations. But I can sit on the couch with my wife and our son and we can watch a movie. But for me, watching a movie is really just painting time. You know, I like to let my brain tune into the film, listen to what's happening, but, but I want to give my full attention to the painting. And for me, having art rage in my house makes everywhere I go way more fun and since we have to be in our houses all the time right now at least in the united states i have tools all around me i have so many devices with a stylus that it's ridiculous like it's it's just redundancy beyond any necessity it's ridiculous for sure but it's like a safety blanket to me because if i can draw anywhere that i am i feel better right and sometimes, right, especially right now, we want to feel better. We want to feel like, hey, you know, this this is a this is doable. Like we're everybody's gonna get through this. We're making the right choices. We're taking care of people, you know. Um, and and doing digital art is one of those things that for me is um, an absolute no-brainer for um, for a way to pass the time. Now, if if I'm, maybe you're a traditional artist, you're used to, you know, you, you have drawing skills and you have painting skills and you have uh, all that background, but still you're picking up Art Rage brand new. I would still do the really simple paint a pair, paint an apple, paint one single object with one single light source because any, it's like the first time, like if you're an oil painter and you, you pick up gouache or, or if you're, um, you're a printmaker and you, and you pick up fibers, you know, there's, there's so many ways to do art and each new medium has its own sort of quirks. And so what I would recommend is keeping it very simple. Just keep it really simple. Give yourself a chance to have fun. Paint a familiar subject. You know, don't, don't you, if you're a landscape artist, don't just start into portraiture, but do something you're familiar with. Um, if, if you love doing figures or character art, do that. Just stay, stay in, in a home, kind of a home place. Um, when it comes to subject, because um, when you're getting acclimated to the new tool set, you want to be taking it easy. You want you want to make everything as easy as possible. Um, another thing, the palette knife. The palette knife is really cool. You can have it. Um, where do I have it up here? So you can have it have no pigment on it, or you can actually load it up like you would on your pa on your on your actual palette, and then you can. You know, skim that the paint across the surface, and it looks really cool. Um, a lot of things with Art Rage are brilliant, and and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. But it's not in every case a perfect approximation of. It's always an approximation. It's never a perfect reproduction of traditional painting. So when you start tinkering with the tool, tinker just like you do with a real brush. When you get a new brush, you, you kind of spin it around on the canvas, see what it can do, see how stiff the bristles are and how much that bounce impacts, you know, what you're doing on on the, on whatever sort of surface, you know, whether you're painting on board or canvas, there's a different feel, right? So each one of these tools is gonna have a different feel and you can play with whatever slider you have up. I always keep the settings up 
so I can keep continually, like I can continually modify and adjust the tool. And every once in a while, even after years of painting in ArtRage, I'll find something that just feels like magic. And that's where these settings, uh, right here, that's where these settings came from. Is I was just dinking around and I just stumbled onto something and it was like magic. And I have so many paintings started from that one night when I found those settings that I still have to finish because I was having so much fun. I just kept opening new canvases and starting stuff. And they all are pretty promising. Uh, and you can feel the energy that night and it translated to the brushwork and stuff. So, you know, that's that whole attitude and mentality thing and how it changes the way you paint. Um, and if you give yourself a, a singular focus, just one focus, and you let yourself just enjoy the learning that is your goal. And remember, whatever you're doing, you're just trying to learn that thing. So you're not trying to make a pretty painting. You're never trying to do that. You're never trying to control an outcome. What you're trying to do is learn and get sucked into what it feels like to just absorb into something. Um, so for me, I'm interested in, in the brushwork really tonight and where I'm having some fun and kind of meeting my personal goal is with that, this brush that I created and then just kind of big brushing it and then mixing that with this, I just stumbled upon it setting for my palette knife and it's super late where I am right now and I'm super tired, but I just wanted to paint before going to bed because there's so much to do today and, and I know there's going to be so much to do tomorrow um, you know we're all like where I am we're adjusting all of our curriculum and I'm teaching everything online so all my instructions being migrated all of my demos I'm having to redo in different formats all of my you know it's all new and there's just so much to do then we have a little guy at home and everybody's kind of just stuck in together and it's awesome I love being home with my family but it's, it's a lot, right? So, you know, I could be passing out tired right now. I should be in bed. But when I come out here and I think, oh, what do I want to learn tonight? Well, I, want to, I want to explore this. What is this going to look like? And I give myself a goal, right? And, and you know, I don't know how it's going to work out. You know, I start this painting. I start recording it. And it could go so badly, right? I could go, oh, I'm so glad that that wasn't streaming on Twitch or something. I'm so glad I have the chance to delete that which happens you know it happens but if my focus is just the learning then I walk away from it thinking okay figure something out we'll try again tomorrow and that's that's exactly what you want just oh figure something out try again tomorrow oh and then the next day you know and you're working on something in the house or you're doing something around around with a friend and then and then you're like you get this idea like oh what if I try dot 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 right and then you go after it again the next day so that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. This is not a finished painting. This is me just kind of establishing the big shapes, using big strokes, using the palette knife and the oil brush together. And I'm going to do a part two of this video that is a lot more finished, where it'll kind of take this to the next level. But for tonight, I do need to respect my body. I do need to get some sleep. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up short here and we'll finish it next time. So thank you guys for checking it out um, and best wishes to you all. Stay safe.